All right, so I'm gonna to try to show off uh, a mock-up stock engine for flow understandings for all of us that are running ethanol, because we love it. With our stock turbos, getting up to 260 crank horsepower on the stock turbo running ethanol. We are not trying to get people off ethanol and we are in love with it ourselves. So we gotta run ethanol. These motors are not designed to run ethanol. Even even the 10%, even E10 that these things are allowed to run on is is iffy. How they how these things can process crankcase pressure, especially water contamination from fuels. We're gonna try to show that. So where do we start? Basically, there's no inlet on these engines. If I had a PTO cover bearing and a crankshaft sticking out of here, like we have the understanding, this is a sealed system dipstick tube in here you got a sealed engine there is no air in there is only a little bit of air out and it looks looks impressive it's a big old damn near three quarter inch inner diameter hole right well we're gonna we're gonna show how that's not what it appears to be when we're running these big three quarter inch giant black hoses that come off of here that normally go back to the turbo inlet from the air box what's really going on there and what kind of restriction we're dealing with needs to be understood. So you got a dry sump, crankcase, you got an oil pan that receives return gravity fed oil from the turbo. And then you've got your oil tank. Whereas you can see your dipstick, when this is mounted, protrudes down a ways. So your oil level, sitting way up here. The oil's above the crankcase, crankshaft. So what happens here is how does oil, or how does the air from compression leak, combustion leak, where does it go? How does it get out when you've got a thousand cc injectors running ethanol, running 25 pounds of boost on a stock turbo or whatever, and then you go throwing a big turbo on it, and then you're running 35 or more in the big power of race cars, 40, 40 plus and beyond. There is a very reasonable expectation for cylinder leak past the rings. So there's gonna be a number when they're bone stock, there's gonna be a number for a fresh engine, and there's gonna be a number when you're running gigantic cylinder pressures that are forcing combustion gases past the rings into the crankcase. So it's on every engine, there's gonna be a detectable, measurable, and expected number. When your cylinder pressure gets so high, when you're lifting the heads and things where we've got all this hardware holding the heads down, all this custom stuff going on to hold the cylinder head down, the pressure on the piston rings is presenting dirty air, let's call it that for now, into the crankcase, and wet air specifically, that it can't get rid of. It's a very small volume crankcase, which we'll show off very specifically later. So when you got crankcase pressure, where does it go? Does it push the oil out of the bearings? So when you have pressure in here, and you have oil pressure presented to the main bearings, is the air in there pressing your oil out? It's a brand new crankcase that come with bearings in it. So when you have pressure inside here from your mag side cylinder, is it pressing the oil out? Is it pushing your oil away from where it needs to be? We're gonna prove it that it does. It definitely does. So what we have to show off here is how when you have oil flowing through these motors, where is it going? This is your oil tank, and we've got just one fastener in here to make it easy to take apart with one hand. And we've got some kind of markers to show what's going on. So normally there's a little plastic baffle here that kind of directs oil flow. This is your oil in to your oil pumps. This is where they get oil from the tank. And how does your motor get rid of crankcase pressure. When the pressure is present in the combustion, in the cylinder, 
Oh, coming into the crankcase. How does that get out of here? How does that come out of your little, into your um, catch can that's puking out water and puking out oil everywhere? Where's that coming from? So it actually comes initially through this port right here. And it's really messy because it uses the oil pump, which is isn't, not installed, but that's the, the two rotor, dual rotor sump pump that gets all of its oil from underneath in, in a sump, from the little baskets down there. And what is actually there is water and oil. So it's whipping up like a blender, your water and oil mix from every second and moment this engine's running and spraying it back into here. Like this is like a feed. So it fills your tank up and it's, it, you basically have this, this volume of really nasty oil in here. And there's a couple other baffles we're concerned about inside here. What happens is it fills it up and then it has a drain from the cylinder head presented by this arrow here. This arrow down goes all the way up in like this boss channel area, which we'll take the head off real quick and show. And that is presenting oil from the valve train back down into your oil tank. And it connects to that matching baffle and, and sends it out right here. Another way that air and oil are moving around in here is here. This is above the oil line and this is sending the dirty wet air out of the engine. It's trying to. It's sending it through this baffle and diverting it down into this oil galley. It's actually an air galley and presenting it into the cam chain. And I have to get the light, sorry, but there is That hole right there, that dark hole in the bottom is where the air and oil get presented back into the chain case here where it drops down, down there out of that hole at the bottom. So, that sounds good. Air is getting up here, right? Moist, dirty, wet air, right? It's getting out of your oil tank after it's been blended up by your oil pump. It's basically forced the oil and water to become mixed and spraying it in here as a milk, milky oil. You got milky oil and no one can see it. There's no one's caring, no one's taking these apart and looking when the car is hot, cold, whatever. And I guess we'll try to cover that real quick. Where, where does water go when it's mixed with oil? Does oil float on top? Like an oil spill in the ocean? Yeah, oil floats up top, right? So your water's down here and your dipstick's right here. So no one's pulling this out of this tube and saying, oh shoot, I got milky oil, I got water on my dipstick. Yeah, it's because it's all down here. What else is down here? That's right, your feed to your oil pumps. So it's always, it's a, it's a self-killing situation. It just keeps hurting itself, hurting itself, blending up the water and oil mix, presenting it to your cams, to your chain, to your valve train, to your crankshaft, to your turbo, is uh, frothy, milky oil. So when you're checking it from the dipstick, you're checking it from the best environment possible where you're getting actual, sort of what looks like clean oil, especially when the car is running, where it's been run hard. What we end up doing here is this thing lets all this air up and it lets it into your valve train. And then you have this giant hole where it all gets out of, right? So it's not a problem. It, you got a three quarter inch inner diameter hole exiting all my dirty wet air. But like we showed off in a previous video, these things are meant to be upside down. These were uh, designed with being in watercraft in 2014 in mind. And, and you can clearly see from some of the design that they were meant to be, they're pretty much clearly gonna be turbocharged from the get-go because they have oil squirter areas machined. But what happens here? This thing's meant to be upside down. So how do they get all the air out of these motors? How do they get ethanol? How do they get water out of these motors? 
BRP designed these engines to be upside down so that if it's upside down for a very long time, your valve cover starts filling up with oil. It finally starts filling up. And you end up eventually getting oil so far up in here because the vehicle's upside down for minutes and probably a long time. We haven't even tested that, but it's clearly made to be in a watercraft upside down and a UTV upside down. So they make all this nasty air that comes out of your big daddy hose here that we're all trusting and running huge hoses from our catch cans. It has to go through your exhaust cam. You say what? Okay, so that's what this baffle is. This little guy, this troublesome little guy, is here to keep oil from spraying through this. And that is a real tiny little hole. That's hollow. So the camshaft's hollow. Then what happens? It goes through the hollow camshaft. And then it's got a seal on the end of it. Exhaust cam has a seal. That seal mates up to that build area right there, that casting, that casted flat area where you can see the seal has been spinning up against one. It's gonna be real hard to show with this filming effort, but that is not the same diameter at all uh, as the exit port. It is restricted. It is not even at three eighths inner diameter. It wouldn't matter if it was. It's gonna be restricted on the bolt that's in the other side. The inner diameter of this fastener is what's gonna limit airflow. And it is smaller on that side than it is on this side and it is sealed. So without taking this stuff apart on this video, this big old hole is not what it looks like. It is not able to vent that much air to the atmosphere and moisture to the atmosphere. So, what our system does, and I'll just jump right into that before I show some other stuff. We're gonna have you pop your valve cover off we're gonna have you pop that off as easily as I just did. And you're gonna pop this off as easily as I just did. It just pops right off your fingers. And then usually the install is gonna be like this. When you're looking at the motor, intake manifold is gonna be in front of you. You're gonna take the fast UTV valve cover. We put a lot of energy into getting this to work right and getting everything to fit and every stock part of your car is going to work just fine. Bone stock car can run this. Bone stock car. If, and it has its own value and attributes. We get rid of the air through a proper pull without restriction. We have it below the camshafts. See the mating surface? And where we are mating, we are below all the crazy spinning stuff that's flicking everything everywhere. And we put a lot of work into this, but ours is fully baffled to where the two ports that you've seen on used in the other videos are, are sprayed directly into this large, much larger area. Where we have a stock valve cover here, and we have the fast UTV valve cover here. So OEM location for exit and our ultra port to vent to the atmosphere, which is also below the cam sprocket. Uh, we'll get another video, but this thing is has its own baffle, perforated baffle in there. So when we go to put this on, see if I can use one hand without dropping the gasket too sloppily. Drop the gasket. I don't even want to mess with this on this video, but I'm gonna need two hands. Basically, this just goes right on. You fasten it down just like the stock one at nine Newton meters for the fasteners. We produce three fasteners here and one here. You use your OEM 
crank vent, this little guy goes right here. And if it's a bone stock car, we supply, depending on what system you get, this, these will be plugged. So both sides of this will be plugged. You don't even need to run our ventilation system, which see the other videos. We, we tap into the dirtiest, nastiest air and we send it to here. We send it right out of the right out of the nasty place. We don't let it mix with the oil. We don't let it mix with the oil tank. We let it right out now. Right out now. Those nasty crankcase full of water, combustion gases, into valve cover and out. Into valve cover volume and out. So we'll try to show off what actually happens, but if you don't know what's happening to your bearings, <coughs> excuse me and your DLC coated buckets, your lifter buckets for your top end valve train. If no one's showing you this, we build engines here, so it's time that we fix this problem now that we can. Check out our other videos, please.